guys, I'm Laurie Vitali. On this episode of Laurie Nikishan, I want to share with you what I like to call my apple pie rolls. So they're kind of like cinnamon rolls, but with like an apple pie filling. They're fantastic, perfect for this time of year. I actually shared a photo um, of these on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago because I made them one weekend because we had company over and they're so good. I had everyone ask for the recipe. You need to follow me on Instagram if you don't. It's a great way for you to get to see like what I eat on a regular basis, really random stuff. And also, if there's ever recipes that I make that I'm testing or whatever and I'm sharing them with you, it's a great way for you to kind of get in there and tell me whether or not you want to see a video on it. So, I made them. You want to see them? I deliver because that's just what I do. Let me take you over the ingredients to make the dough, which is just the same as my regular cinnamon rolls. Flour, sugar, salt, milk, melted butter, egg, yeast, a little more sugar, vanilla, and some warm water. That's all you need to make the dough. It's my foolproof cinnamon roll dough that works every single time, and I love it. Okay, I've got a little bit of warm water to it. I'm gonna add some active dry yeast and a little bit of sugar. And you're just gonna let this sit aside for a few minutes until the yeast gets all proofy and wonderful. In the meantime, I'm just gonna actually, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna add all of my dry ingredients to the bowl of my standing mixer. That way we're ready for it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, <laughs> the flour is everywhere. I'm just gonna go ahead and grease this bowl with a little vegetable oil. That way it's ready for when my dough comes together and it needs to rise. But I'm just gonna clip this back on, wait for the yeast, and then we'll proceed. Once your yeast is ready, you pretty much add everything in. I used to do it in stages, but I don't get why. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make a smidge of a difference at all. So just add everything in, mix it, let the mixer do your work, let it knead for you. You can do this by hand, of course. You're just gonna need to knead it for a while. Just a little vanilla extract, because it does make a big difference, I think and then just lift this up and knead it for about, I would say three to four minutes or until it's smooth and it kind of comes together and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Perfectly ready. I love this dough. All right, but I just can't get it out. Okay, get it into my oiled bowl. Boom. Oh, it's lovely. I really smell the vanilla too. Just roll it around so that it um, coats, the, the oil gets all around it. Now I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap and it needs to rise until doubled in size. It could take an hour to two hours, just keep it somewhere warm and draft free. Um, like I said, between an hour and two hours, I just keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna cover this up, put it somewhere safe, and then we'll get going on starting the apple filling. While the dough is rising, let's work on the apples. Now, really simple and really easy. We're not gonna do much to them. What I have here um, are some apples. I use gala apples because that's what I love to eat as a snack, so I figured might as well because that's what works. That's what all. That's what cooking is all about, especially home cooking anyway. Use what you got, use what you like. I've got my gala apples. I have peeled them and I just sliced them into about, I don't know, quarter inch thick or something like that. In a saucepan, I've got a tablespoon of butter. To that, I'm just gonna add my apples and a little bit of water. You could add some apple cider instead of water here if you want to. I don't think it really makes a difference. And all the flavor, you know, the spices and everything like that, it's gonna come later. So I don't really need it at this point. And all you're gonna do is wait until, on medium high heat, wait until you can start to see the water starts boiling a little bit. And then once you see that, pop the lid on, reduce the heat to low, medium low, and let it simmer for 10 minutes. And I'll show you what they look like when they're there. Looks great. Now do not panic if some of your apple pieces are a lot softer. Can you even see me through the steam? <laughs> if they're a lot softer than others, none of, that, none of that matters. All that matters is the flavor in the actual apples. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just drain the apples through a colander like so. Like I said, do not worry if the apples break up because actually later on when you go to mix them to add them to your rolls, are all gonna fall apart anyway. Just let them sit, 
until your dough is ready. You want all that liquid to really drain so that they are um, as free from liquid as you can possibly manage to get them. So I'm just going to set them aside while my dough rises and then we'll get started on rocking and rolling. Once your dough has risen, I just dumped it onto a floured surface. I'm just going to flour the top. It's really lovely. Just knead it for a second. Look how beautiful. Very, very forgiving. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, and we can start rolling it out. Now let me talk you through the filling. So I've got my apples here that we cooked up earlier and I had them draining. And to that, I just have a little bit of flour that I'm going to add. And then here I have brown sugar, I have got granulated sugar, cinnamon, a little small pinch of ground allspice, totally optional, a little grating of nutmeg, I've got some orange, and then you need some butter. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and roll out my dough here. I want it to be about uh, like a 16 by 8 inch rectangle and you can just have your hands help you with this. It's so beautiful. It's so elastic. Oh, I love it. So just keep, keep an eye out on it. You want to make sure it's about the same thickness. Now I like to do uh, 12 rolls in a 9 by 13 and then I do four more in a different pan like a little round pan or an 8 by 8 or something like that because I feel like if I overcrowd the pan the apple mixture it, it do doesn't cook in it doesn't cook throughout well enough so I'm just gonna take my time roll this out a little bit more that looks fantastic before we go any further I'm just gonna mix together the sugars and the spices, you want to make sure that you have this all done ahead of time. You can use only cinnamon if you want to. I think the little bit of allspice and a little bit of nutmeg just kind of, I don't know, it makes it a little more special. It kind of gives me a little bit more of that holiday vibe. And then I always, I always add a little orange zest to my apple pie or to pretty much apple anything. So I add it here and I think it makes a big difference. Okay, this is ready. I'm just going to stir my apples with just a little bit of flour. You can see they'll break up a little bit, but that's fine. Just go ahead and do that. That's just to absorb any excess liquid that didn't get drained away. And then you just plop your butter right down. Use a spatula of some sort and just smear it in one even layer. Looks good. I'm just going to take half of the sugar mixture, just sprinkle it evenly over the top, break up any pieces of brown sugar. It smells so good, so Christmassy, so holiday-ish. I love it. And then, this is a bit of a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. And then my apples. The rest of the sugar. These are really be fantastic for either breakfast, dessert, or you know, if you're having people over in the afternoon around this time of the year, it's always nice to whip out something really yummy and comforting and it makes the house smell really good. These would be really nice. And then I just take my orange and I kind of just grate it on top like that, and a little goes a long, long way. Just make sure that you collect it from the back. See that? Make sure you shake off your little microplane zester here because sometimes it gets stuck. You don't want to add too much because these are not orange rolls. Although, those would be delicious. All right. Oh, it's okay. All right, perfect. So now, Starting at one end, the end closest to you, you are just going to roll like a giant, delicious jelly roll, cigar, whatever you want to call it. Just roll, roll, roll like that. And then when you get to the very end, you want to make sure you just kind of seal your edges 
like so. I try to do this as quick as possible simply because I don't want anything to stick and then I kind of just roll over that seam. Oh, that's a beauty. Shake off any excess flour. And then just take a knife and cut this into 16 equal pieces. So cut it in half. And then cut eight out of each half. These look great. I've got four more back there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosely cover these with some plastic wrap and let them rest for about a half hour or so. And then I'm going to preheat my oven to 350. But before I put them in, I'll show you what they look like because you want them to rise quite a bit. But for now, I'm just going to cover and let them rest. You can see they have risen quite a bit. I'm just going to pop them into my oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it lightly golden brown. And then let them cool completely before we go ahead and glaze them with our cream cheese glaze. Because I have to. It's the holiday season. Like I said before, if you're going to go overboard, it should be this time of year. My rolls were in the oven for around 30 minutes. I've let them cool. You can see the center one has magically gone. <laughs> onto my plate. <laughs> now I'm going to work on making the glaze, which is like a cream cheese glaze, which for me, it's necessary. You don't need to do it, but I love it. So I do it all the time. Anytime I make rolls, I like to do it. So what I have here is uh, confectioner sugar, powder sugar, and some softened cream cheese. You want to make sure that your cream cheese is softened at room temperature. I'm going to add a splash of vanilla to this. And then I also have some milk. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work the cream cheese with the sugar together just to get it going and then I'm going to slowly start adding the milk. You want to start adding the milk about a tablespoon at a time until you reach the desi your desired consistency because some people might want it more like a frosting and they might want it really thick or you might want it super thin so it's up to you but I'm just going to start working this together and then we'll start adding the milk until I reach my desired consistency. That looks gorgeous. I have to switch to my whisk once I start adding the milk because it makes it easier to get everything incorporated. Now this is really rich so you don't need a lot, but just take that, swirl it onto your roll. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Let it fall into all the grooves. I don't know what it is, man, but it is a good combo. I need to just get a bite of this. Break me off a piece of that roll. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. But uh, why is it so good? It is like pumpkin, not pumpkin, apple pie in roll form with the cream cheese glaze on top is perfection. That is awesome. And if you or amazing, which I know you are, and then these are worthy to be on your holiday table this year, no matter what you're celebrating. Hey, it can be my birthday. You should serve these. I mean, whatever. They're worthy of a special occasion, spilling stuff everywhere. <laughs> They're Laura in the Kitchen Uncomfortable, the Ridge Recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I will see you next time.